So I'll move on to the high school level of the, of the kit. Again, it is aligned to the MGSS standards. If you're joining um, later, I just want to let you know that I said this earlier, but I'm not going to read all of the MGSS standards right now, but you can request the PowerPoint at the end by um, emailing our tech support team. So then all this information will be available to you later to read. So overview and objectives of the high school level. In this experiment, students will be investigating the angular velocity and the loss of energy of a fidget spinner. Now remember I said the elementary kit was more qualitative in nature. We're kind of taking the fidget spinner and thinking about what it's really doing. The high school version, version is more quantitative. So we're going to actually use a lot more math calculations and even graphing with this and we're going to implement some technology. So the students will be determining the angular velocity of the spinner as well as the energy loss due to friction and we're going to be plotting an exponential decay curve. Super exciting stuff, I know. So the background is the same as the elementary but I will repeat it for the people who have joined since I talked about that. So fidget spinners come in all different styles, but at the core of all of them are these black ball bearings. Here. The bearings allow the outer ring to rotate freely around the inner ring. The quicker the force is applied, the faster the spinner will rotate. And once in motion, all fidget spinners eventually stop. No matter how good the bearings are, no matter how good the installation, manufacturing, the friction will kick in and all of them will eventually stop spinning. So like I mentioned earlier, we're going to be implementing technology into the high school section. So as you can see here, I have a photo gate and timing system. I won't touch it too much because it's kind of set up nicely and I don't want to destroy it. But we have a photo gate set up here and that's going to be collecting data for us. So the basic shape of most spinners is a three arm shape and they can be used easily with a photo gate to quantify the way in which energy is lost. So our approach will be to measure the angular rotation rate of the fidget spinner using a photo gate. Then we're going to calculate the normalized energy of the spinner and fit the resulting curve with an exponential decay function and compare the results. Next slide please. Thank you. So procedure number one for high school. We're going to be using a lab clamp to hold the fidget spinner so that it can freely spin. Now this took me a little bit to kind of master here. So uh, when you set this up at home, the clamp isn't dead center of the middle. It's kind of slightly outward because that is the perfect spot where it rotates freely. So you'll just want to make sure it might take a little fumbling in the lab before you can get started. So you'll want to position the photo gate so that the widest part of the fidget spinner arm interrupts the photo gate. So and that's usually if the spinner is like this then the photo gate will want to be around it. You don't want to do it this way just because when it's this way it's kind of way less, it's very narrow, but if you have it here, then there's a chance that the photo gate will collect the entire surface area and it'll be nice data. So that's why I have it set up this way. So the sensor will record the duration that the photo gate is blocked and calculate the angular rotation rate every second. So I did include sample data on your screen if you wanted to take a look at that. The, um, the ARB column, I don't know, it reminds me of Arby's, I don't know why it's called ARB, but um, the Arby's column will give the time the spinner arm was blocked. So I will talk a little bit more about that sample data on the next slide here. In the sample data set, the angular velocity is actually 4,839 degrees per second, not 4.8387. And that's because the millimeter width is converted to meters per second in the linear velocity calculation. So this means that the degrees are converted to kilo degrees per second. So that's how we get 4,839 degrees per second. So that actually sounds like a whole lot, 
But since there are 360 degrees per rotation, this actually corresponds to about 13 revolutions per second or so. So whoever did this really, I mean, that's, that's pretty hard. I don't think I can achieve 13 revolutions per second, but the person who wrote this content is very strong. I'm not. <laughs> so we can move on from the sample data now. So we'll go on to interpreting the data. So similar to kinetic energy, which is proportional to velocity squared, rotational kinetic energy is proportional to the angular velocity squared. So if we square the angular velocity, we can see how the energy changes. So there, again, there is some sample data there all flushed out and all of the, all the buckets are filled with data. So the students will then plot their data points on a graph. So I'm wondering now if they can see the spinner up close. Oh, sure. The question is, can I see the spinner up close? So I do have a Ward Science fidget spinner here, which if you do buy our fidget spinner kit, then this one, this beautiful spinner will be provided for you. And there we go. Check that out. Thank you. You are very welcome. Pretty sweet, huh? There you go. Thank you. you are welcome. Okay, let's move on to the exponential decay graphs. Yay! Okay. <laughs> now we're going to fit an equation to the points plotted on the graph. So energy decay very often follows an exponential curve, so we'll try that using the below equation, the one that's on the slide. So to, to determine the value of t, we can use any sample we want except zero, since that will give a nonsensical result, obviously, that won't help us very much. Using a sample in the middle of the data collection works well because that's when the photo gate is in its best data collection and that's when the spinner's kind of reached its ideal point as well. So we always like to pick a nice middle value. So now we're gonna calculate the energy percentage with our formula, the one that's listed above, using the value we calculated for T. And you're gonna enter the result in the last row of the table that was on the previous slide. Then we're gonna plot the values in the chart. And then this is when the students are asked, how well does the exponential function follow your data set? So the students, where was I? The students will answer this question, how well does the exponential function follow the data set? So that's when we'll see if the students are really close to that nice exponential curve. So there is some additional questions to consider in this experiment. Our study shows how energy is lost, and the students can ask, where does the, where does the lost energy go? Very good question. Question number two, how do you think the mass of the spinner arms affect the value of T that we discussed on the previous slides? So if the spinner arms were heavier, lighter, would that make a difference and why? And how would the value change if we perform this experiment in a vacuum chamber? We do have those. Well, we have a bell jar. That's kind of the same thing. <laughs> Um, how would the value change if we attached small streamers to the spinner arms? So not only is this spinning, but we have additional items hanging from the fidget spinner, so that I think that'll make a big difference. And how would the value change if we performed this experiment in space with zero gravity? If I had the chance, I'd bring this bad boy up to space. I would. Can someone take me to space? Do any of you have access to space? Because I will gladly go to space and test this out. So if you have any questions, please email me. My email address is up there. And also, like I mentioned before, if you need a copy of the presentation, please email sciencehelp at vwr.com. That's our tech support team. They are fantastic. Also want to remind everybody that we have, including myself, a bunch of science people, scientists, formal, former teachers at your disposal, please email us anytime. We'd be very happy to help.